Hey everyone, my name is Gamer Cory, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Now in today's video, we're going to be designing and showing you guys a design for an iron farm. Now I can't take full credit for it, however I did kind of take it upon myself to build it and fully give a tutorial on it because uh, obviously this is uh, brand new. I've always wanted to make a stackable iron farm and that's exactly what we're going to be doing today. Now I tried doing this a long long time ago in my own creative world kind of like what we're in right now and I wasn't able to actually ever do that but that was a long time ago before I really understood iron golem mechanics especially the way that they are today. So I want to show off Tango Tech's Iron Farm from Hermitcraft Season 7. So Tango, if you do watch this video, and I hope it's okay that I put this out there. But anyway, look at this. This thing is insane. We've got two tiers. Basically, it is completely stackable. So you could build this all the way up to the spawn limit or the height limit if you really wanted to. It really doesn't matter. This thing is truly, truly amazing. And it is incredibly powerful. And you get um, anywhere between 8 and typically 12 golems, golems per cycle that we have uh, set on that hopper clock down below. And I'm going to get into the complete build of this thing. So hopefully you guys are ready for this because it's definitely going to take us a lot of time to build this. And it's going to take even that much longer to build this thing in survival there we go so we're actually getting what uh that's seven six seven golems the first time and then if we actually wait a little bit longer we're actually going to get a little bit more so it's pretty insane how many iron golems you can actually get with this farm and i definitely recommend that you guys build this in your own survival world or even on an smp server so let's go ahead and get started now, believe it or not, I do have all the items for that farm in this chest. Well, most of them. I'm not necessarily going to show you guys exactly how to build the, the chamber down there. That's actually not what's in there. There's a little bit of resources that are needed in that chest. But uh, the collection can really be made however you would really like it to be. So I'm not really going to... I'm going to build it for you guys, but the building materials aren't really in there. So you'll have to add those. Um, so let's go and take a look at what's in the chest. Take a screenshot if you guys need it. This is what you guys are going to need. The reason I put two water buckets in there, it's to basically kind of look like a uh, infinite water source because you're going to need a lot of water. Um, you're going to need 24 beds. I didn't put all the beds in this because I would have taken up the entire chest, but you will need 24 beds. So we need one repeater, two comparators, 24 trap doors, 60 fence gates, uh, 18 pieces of redstone dust, two hoppers for the mine, or for this is going to be for the hopper clock, hopper clock. We have uh, nine uh, redstone torches, 24 workstations. It doesn't have to be Fletcher tables. It can be whatever workstations you want for the villagers. For, as far as the, the smooth stone goes and the glass, I, I kind of put these in here together. I really like smooth stone, and I also like really, really using glass because I think it just looks really clean. However, iron golems will not technically spawn on glass so that's also why i have this in here but you will need a combination of 470 building blocks so if you want to build on all of the stone you definitely can do that um and then this is without the killing chamber at the bottom you will need 96 walls of some kind they don't necessarily have to be stone brick i just like the way they look uh if you're building the ch killing chamber this is what you'll also need you'll need 12 signs um couple lava buckets, a lot more building blocks. And then you're going to need a name tag for the zombies, technically four of them. You're going to need some villagers, which you're going to need 24 of those. And you're also going to need four zombies for this. And like I said, this is completely stackable. So let's go ahead and get into the build itself. Let's go ahead and break that. Let's collect all of our supplies that we are going to need. Fantastic. Now, what I definitely recommend that you guys go ahead and do is build wherever you guys are starting this at. We're going to build this maybe like here is you're going to want to at least go about 20 blocks in in the air. So that way, I mean, 16 is the minimum so that the iron golems fall out of the 
range of the uh, villagers so that they can spawn more. So we got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Now you definitely could go ahead and build this below ground if you really, really, really want to, but you don't necessarily have to. Completely up to you. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and start with uh, the Fletcher tables or the workstations. You're going to put three in a corner like this. And then we're going to go 14 from whatever side. It's going to be slightly, it's not going to be perfectly square. It's just a little bit different. So we got, this is going to be, and the reason I'm using Fletchering tables is because I don't have to control or shift click to get this because there's no, the reason that I like to use Fletching tables is because there is no interaction with them as of right now. So we got, we're going to go 14 from here. So we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and then 13, 14 will be Fletching tables. And then another one on this side. And then on this side, we're going to go 15. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Then we got 14, 15. And then we're going to do 14 over here again. And we're just going to line it up with, uh, this side here. So we're going to go there, there, and there. So that's basically the shape that you're going to get from it. Now, the reason that we're doing 14 on these two sides is because we want uh, the zombie to basically be seven away evenly on the 15 side from each of these. So this would be the center right here. So this is actually where the zombie is going to be going right basically standing right there it's going to be in this little area right there all right so that's how we're going to do that um so you're going to want to go ahead and find the middle over here as well however you necessarily want to do that that should be the middle right there oh that's off one right there and then what you're going to do is you're going to delete all of these, except you're going to want to leave two on each side around those tables because that's where the beds are going to go. All right, so from here, what we want to do is we want to build up from the fletching tables. We're actually going to go up three. So this is actually going to be our ceiling above the fletching tables. But on this one right here, the one down from the top, we're actually going to go ahead and put trap doors. We're going to go ahead and close those. I wanted to use iron, but I was like, eh, that's fine. I guess I don't really want to have to worry about it and uh, use the, uh, let's use trap, regular trap doors because I can actually close them easily without powering them. So we're going to do this over here. We're going to do three there and then trap door, trap door, trap door, trap door. And then you can delete everything below those three. And then you're going to do that on all four sides. So at this point, whatever side you did the 15, so you can should be able to tell based on where your um, zombie spawner, or zombie holders will actually be. You're gonna come one out past the trap door. The reason that I go one out past the trap door is because iron golems could potentially get stuck on those trap doors. Whereas if you have a little bit of an overhang, then they necessarily can't get stuck. So we're gonna go out five from there, and then we're gonna go all the way across to the other side. So that creates that lat, uh, that lip all the way and the overhang all the way across. And we're going to go out to five here. And then we need to basically fill in that entire area right there. This is where our iron golems are going to be spawning or the capabilities of them spawning. We're giving them plenty of spawning spaces and they will use them, which is amazing. And then we're just going to go ahead and fill all this in. And then we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. I tried to punch to show you guys over there, but it didn't really work out for me. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. We're going to come overhang and then all the way down. So that's kind of what your build should be looking like so far. And then what you're going to want to do is if you um, are going to be stacking this, you would go up basically from this one, you would go up 14. So that'd be one. And then so that two, three, and then you go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. And then you could do your table right here and then this is where you would start the next set of the, the spawning and that's if you wanted to be able to do that and then what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to grab your walls and i always go out just like so and then you're going to go all the way out and then you're going to go two past because we want to be able to give them a two spot gap to fall down and then on this side you're going to want to go and surround that entire platform Just like this. 
and then one, two, there we go. Now, the reason that I like to use glass here is because now golems can't spawn on this. If you guys are going to use like this, the smooth stone here, you're going to have to put a slab or redstone dust on the top of it just so that iron golems don't spawn on this. You don't want that to happen. Now, at this point, we're this is where the water would go, but let's go ahead and put our fence gates that we're going to be putting down. And it does not matter which side you do this on. You have to do the whole, you know, shift click if you want to go ahead and put these down. But I'm going to go ahead and just fly because it's easier for me, at least right now anyway. And then what we're going to do is we're going to open all of those. Make sure that you're doing them this way and not this way because they will connect to the wall if you do this way. And then the golems could potentially get stuck on that one and you don't want that to happen. That's why we have like the walls going all the way out because if we were to put the wall only to say here, they could actually get caught on that little bit of a lip right there and we don't want that at all. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing on this side with the fence gates here. All right, perfect. So let's go ahead and start working on the zombie chambers. So this is going to be where the zombie is going to be kind of chilling out, which is going to be just like that on that side. You want this to gap because this will actually line them up perfectly so that the villagers will go ahead and see them. So you want basically like that. And then you want one below because that's where the uh, sticky piston is actually going to go. And then what we're going to do here is we're going to grab one of our sticky pistons, which I seem to have misplaced or somehow didn't add into my inventory, which is unfortunate. But you will need six sticky pistons. So I do apologize if I didn't say that earlier. And then we're going to come down and then down one. And then we're going to face that one up. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. And the ingredients that were in that chest is actually to make two full layers now if you only want to have one layer that's perfectly fine you only need to have one layer if you want to you you can make three layers you can make four layers you can make 20 layers i guess if you really want to it is completely up to you now let's go ahead and grab our beds we're kind of going all over the place here but you're going to want to put your beds down here and then whatever one is the 15 you're going to want to go out in that direction you don't want them closer to the zombie so we're going to go here here and then we're going to grab that like so now let's go ahead and put our bed there and there then also here and then we just got to fill in our beds here perfect now at this point you could actually load in your uh villagers so we can actually, we're going to go ahead and simulate that just real quick here. So let's go ahead and, all right, here's your villagers. You guys are ready to be moved in. So the best way to do it is actually to put them up to this level here. And then what you would do is like go right about here and then just drop them in. And then that way they just kind of go in where they're supposed to, which is pretty amazing. Then at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to build our mechan mechanism for our zombie. So we're going to go down one, and then we're going to go all the way over, like so. And then in the middle one, or whatever one you want to call the middle, it's going to be one of these two blocks. So it's going to be a little off-center, which is unfortunate. But what you're going to want to do is come down a couple like that. You're going to want to break this one, and also this one right there. And then what you would do is you would actually put um, a redstone torch there and there. And then what you can do here is you're going to grab your redstone dust. And then you're just going to line that across the top there. Perfect. Now, if you break this one, it's going to get stuck up. And then if you put it down, again, it should suck it down. Beautiful. Make sure that you put the redstone dust in afterwards. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down one and over one. This is where our hopper clock is going to be. It doesn't matter what side you put it on. It could be either one. And then I recommend that you guys go ahead and use a repeater here into this block whoops uh, the repeater into that block not a sticky piston we're going to come out one and this is where our redstone block is going to be sitting on right here and then we're going to come out and i probably shouldn't use that so let's go ahead and use our blocks here and then we're going to come out to there and put one there as well so we're going to go sticky piston here and a sticky piston there 
and they're just going to basically flip flop this one. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to come down one over one, delete that one, down one over one and delete that one. And then you're going to want to put a block there and a block there. And this is where your comparators are going to go. And then you're going to put redstone dust on these blocks. And then we're going to need some hoppers. This, the two hoppers that you're going to need, you're going to want to put one into the floor and then basically shift and make that facing into it. Delete that first one and then put it back into the other one so that the tails are facing into each other. And that's all we're going to do with the hopper clock, at least for the time being. Now, I definitely recommend that you guys put glass or slabs over this so that nothing can spawn down here because this is a full block and it could spawn down here. And they iron golems can also spawn the top of pistons, just so you guys know. And then they shouldn't spawn there, but if you want to put one on top of that repeater, you definitely can go ahead and do that. They definitely won't spawn there. You won't have to worry about that at all. Now, at this point, you'd actually go ahead and load in your zombie. So what you do is you'd find this one right here and bring your zombie and just put them right in. So we can go ahead and simulate that right now. And we can actually just go ahead and put them in like that. And we're going to cover them back up. Obviously, you'd want to do it at night if possible. Don't die, zombie. Don't do it. And then we're going to go ahead and name both of these guys so that they are ready. Or you could actually have them pick something up. It's completely up to you. If you don't have the name tags, see which zombies pick stuff up. If you have the name tags, then I prefer naming them. But it's completely up to you what you guys would like to do. Now, at this point in time, what we can do is we can start building the killing chamber. I know I said I wasn't really going to do that, but we... Did that guy just... Oh, I thought one of them died. So this would be the falling area right here, and we want to go all the way down to this ground. So this would be the falling area, and this, this would be the middle. And that's what we want, and we're going to come out two from each side. So it's going to be a five wide platform. That's just to catch all the iron golems that do fall. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come all the way out so that it is only one past that wall. So if this is the wall, this is where we want our wall for the, um, the killing chamber to be at. So that is basically one of our killing chambers. Now, it doesn't matter what side you start the flow on for your infinite water source, but you are going to want to put all your water sources back there so that the way it's pushing it uh, you will need some ice for this portion of it too so i like to use packed ice um, and then the other thing that you guys will need is you will need um, stone pressure plates again this is what i like to use and then what i'm going to do is go ahead and break this one here and then we're going to put stone pressure plates on the top of them and then that will stop the water and then we can actually go ahead and put more water here which I actually, I only want um, a couple sources for. So let's go ahead and try that again. We're going to have a source there and a water source there. And you're going to see that it's going to stop here. And wherever it stops in the middle one, that's where you want to go ahead and put your ice again. And then again, we're going to put pressure plates. And then this next one should go all the way down. Perfect. Now, whatever the middle one is, you can actually go ahead and break that. Put a um, another one there. And then you can put ice there with the stone pressure plate and then that way things will actually just kind of go off the path but whatever one you actually you want to go out to here like so because we're going to be holding in the um the lava so what we're going to want to do is on this one right here we will grab signs if you have them which i think we actually had some signs here for this perfect and then it's going to go out basically those four and it's going to go over just a little bit of an overhang from that. And that's perfectly normal. And then what we're going to do is we're going to build the exact same killing chamber on this side. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Now at this point in time, we got to do uh, some water here at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to go every other to fill in a complete water source on all of these. Because it is a 15 wide. So that's perfect. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. With our water. Or you could use ice up here. Definitely don't build this or stay away from building this in a snowy area just because you have to do some other prevention stuff uh, to prevent it from actually becoming full water blocks. I mean, you can. I actually did do it just to see if it works. And it does work. It just, you have to put like blocks above here 
And what I did is I ended up putting like a lighting up here, like sea lanterns or glowstone on both sides. And then the same thing down there. But what I did is I used torches uh, next to all of those water sources down there. All right, so at this point, what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to come down to your hopper clock. And what I recommend is we're gonna get two full stacks. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna put a stack and a half in. And that's going to basically raise that uh, that zombie up. All right, so we only got one iron golem so far. So that's actually really disappointing. Well, let's go ahead and see what happens when the next time hits. And there we go. We actually got four iron golems to drop that time. And that was actually at the end of the cycle. So there's actually two cycles. There's actually the beginning of the cycle. And then it should hold the zombie long enough so that you actually get two spawns of it. So actually in one flip-flop of the redstone dust using that hopper clock there, we actually got a total of five iron golems. So now what we can do is we can actually just wait for the next round here to see how many iron golems we should get. Minimum technically should always be four, but you have a chance of getting up to that doubled so you can get hopefully anywhere between four and eight iron golems each time that the, the cycle actually happens um, and there's another four there so it is actually already working absolutely wonderful so what we can actually do is we can actually just go ahead and wait to see when that iron uh when that redstone uh flip flops there actually go ahead and take a look so we actually only have a little bit of time left here and i find that uh a stack and a half is beautiful and works absolutely perfect for that hype, uh, the hopper clock mechanism. I tried everything that you could probably think of. If you guys find a better one, then leave a comment down below because I'd love to hear it. Oh, and then we got two more. So that cycle, we actually got a total of six iron golems, which is pretty amazing. But uh, that is pretty much it, you guys. This is the whole iron farm completely done now i'm gonna let you guys know that in real time i guess i know i was in creative it took me 36 minutes and that was even starting the recording of the video over at the other iron farm so it shouldn't take terribly long to get everything in place now obviously getting the zombies and the villagers in the right places will take the longest not the build itself but hopefully you guys are definitely prepared for that but if you guys did enjoy the video in any way then don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below it would help me out a lot and is greatly appreciated and if you guys are wanting to check out the world download so that you guys can see this block for block then that link will be down in the description it will send you guys over to my website so that you guys can go ahead and download it and check it out for yourself. So you guys should actually spawn really close to this iron farm, if I remember right. But anyway, if you guys did enjoy it, you know what to do. But until next time, YouTube, you guys keep doing what you're doing because you're already doing it. And you guys, stay gaming.